Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for my year-end best of 2020 spirits video. So what we have here on this table are all the spirits that made the biggest impression on me throughout the year in their respective categories. Now as I do each and every year when I do this, I do not include allocated or really hard to find spirits, or at least I try not to. There is one in here that might kind of rub into that category uh, but you know you won't see any buffalo trace antique collection so no george t stag or william larue's running up there uh, we don't have any multiple thousand dollar cognacs up here either uh, but what we do have are bottles that with a little searching you can probably find and if you can't find my named in that category hopefully you can find one of the runner-ups or honorable mentions that we have uh, behind them okay so let's go ahead and get started because we've got a lot of bottles to go through. Starting with Bourbon of the Year. This was a category that I kind of struggled with this year because while I tasted a lot of bourbons, there weren't a whole lot that made a big impression on me. You know, we, we saw a lot of really young stuff or, you know, poorly finished products and it was rough. But um, one that jumped out to me that I was, when I was, you know, kind of remember thinking of this list over and everything for... The months that I've been doing this um, was the Baker's 13. I kept coming back to that because this bottle in the bourbon category, the Baker's 13 year old single barrel, as you can tell by that level, I've been loving it. Uh, the Baker's 13 single barrels were really, really solid. And you can tell their little barrel numbers on these little metal tags that they have. And while I've tasted several single barrels of this, they've all been really really solid okay price point on it it was around one hundred dollars retail right now i think I, I can't really find any in stores you can find them on secondary um but you know you know they're going to be coming i think they're going to be coming out with more of that here shortly it's not like they're just going to have a huge success and then just turn away from it uh, so i expect to see some more of these 13s coming out very really soon and i know i'm going to be ready to pick some up when they do now as that's my bourbon of the year, the runner-up, very solid, and I tasted, you know, the batches of this. The Larceny Barrel Proof at only $50 is going to be a very solid recommendation for a runner-up bottle. Uh, again, some of these were pretty spicy and hot when they were first open. They need a little time to open up and kind of, um, you know, show their best, let's say. Uh, but for $50, very satisfied with Larceny Barrel Proof. If you can't find that... Uh, the Stag Juniors were very solid this year. You know, they always are. Um, the Doc Swinsons, 15-year-olds, uh, were pretty good. Some of those batches. I know they just came out with Batch 9. Still really good. Uh, so, price points on those, that's where it starts, you know, 150-ish. It's okay. It's, it's, but, you know, when we're talking 150, that's why they are where they are. But... Even price point, I don't want to say it like that, because even price point aside, Doc Swenson's not going to beat those for me. Uh, but if you can't find those two, just know the Stag Juniors and Doc are available. Now, Rye Whiskey of the Year. This one, I had a late entry, kind of uh, steal the thunder, and that is the Jack Daniels uh, Barrel Proof Rye. Now, the Jack Barrel Proof Ryes are single barrel products. All these single barrels are running right around 130 that I've seen. Uh, 130 point, you know, this one's 133.2. There's some 130s and stuff like this. But these are really solid bottles at only about $65. Now, unfortunately, when the first wave came through, they immediately got bought up. Matter of fact, these just hit my shelves near me this past week. Uh, they got bought up right away. So I was just lucky enough to even find the one. Uh, but solid and of the three single barrels I've had yeah um, they were all very very good so I'm, I'm very proud to showcase this one not that it was the best but it was solid now the one bottle that I was going to put in that rye of the year plot was uh, the Nashville Barrel Company's rye these are sourced MGPs um, retail pricing around $100 Unfortunately, the thing about Nashville Barrel Company right now is that they're only doing a lot of picks for stores and groups. So, you know, short of your store actually having a pick of this or a group that you might be involved in having a pick of this, very hard to get. 
but again, retail price $100. You're looking at a six to seven year old MGP, maybe somewhere in there, I'm guessing. Uh, but really, really solid MGP rise here uh, for $100. And pr proof wise, they're always, they're right around 120, I believe, right around in there. Now, one rye whiskey that uh, I had a couple of, a uh, few single barrels of this year, and I was happy with each and every one of them. Again, MGP Rye is the old pepper distillery single barrels bottled at 110 proof. So they are proofing these down just slightly, but they are very honest with where the, they're sourcing from. It says, you know, distilled in Indiana. It gives us a DSP for MGP. Uh, really solid rise at about $45. I haven't been disappointed with these. So, you know, if that jack had not shown up, that might have been, I mean, it was going to be behind that Nashville. Okay, so very, very solid. All right, Irish Whiskey of the Year. This one was a, a thin category, but there was one that stood out right away when I had it months and months ago, um, and it held a spot throughout the year. That is coming out of the Bowen Distillery. It is the Whistler 7-year-old cast strength batch number one. So down here at the bottom, it tells you the batch. I've had batch one, batch two. Batch two is a little hotter. Batch one, phenomenal. Um, ABV-wise, 118 proof Irish whiskey. Again, seven-year-old at only $55. Yeah, killer. So that was easily number one. Backup for that, man, that was rough. Because again, there wasn't a whole lot of really good Irish coming out, in my opinion, this year. Um, or that I got to experience, let's just say it like that. Uh, the red breast cast strengths are still pretty good. They're not as good as some of the older um, red breast uh, cast strength 12s. Uh, but retail pricing on them now is I think it's about $85. And they're still solid. So if you can't find uh, the Whistler, then look for the red breast 12 cast strength at $85. All right. Now, last year, single malts of the year. Last year, I actually split this category just into peated and unpeated, and I could have done that this year, but I really had a few that were making, making me do a little more, so I was kind of busted these into categories. Uh, space side of the year, these two, I don't know, these two, I almost consider these a tie, okay? Matter of fact, yeah, a tie. Because I really enjoyed the Glenallachy 10-year-old cast strength. This happens to be batch two. Retail pricing on it's only $75. Uh, very solid, very viscous little single malt coming from them. Of course, usually those go into Chevis, so the blends. But now we're starting to see a product line coming out of single barrels 12. I've even seen some that are much older and in the $300, $400 price range for them. Uh, but the Glen Allakies have been very solid. I actually have the, the Virgin Oak 12, and it's, it's good, but it was $100, $110, right around there. I still preferred this one slightly. Uh, but the honorable mention, which could be, I consider, a tie. The Kirkland 22 that came out, you know, again, this for me came to Texas. It didn't come to Texas, but I was able to get it early this year. Matter of fact, they've now come out with a 23-year-old on these shelves there at the Costco's that do get this. Uh, but the 22-year-old retail priced on it was, retail pricing was about $80. And it's a sherried Speyside single malt. Very delicious for only $80. Um, I don't know about that 23 yet. I'm going to try to get one. It might be, it might make an appearance in next year's video. Who knows? All right. Now we have uh, Highland Malt of the Year. This one, yeah. So last year I did show, I think a runner up was the Glendronic 15. Glendronic 15 is still very solid. Could have been right here in this first spot. Uh, but I went ahead and gave the nudge to its older brother, the 18-year-old, at a price point of $175. This is going to be my Highland Malt of the year. Oof, there was a lot of color in some of these 18s. Um, there's a story behind that. You can Google it. Uh, but Glendronic 18, 175, that's going to be my Highland Malt of the year. Now the runner-up, this one, Old Faithful. Klein Leash 14. Um, a buddy of mine, you know, kind of, I would say, reintroduced me to this recently. Um, the Klein Leash 14 has always been solid. I ran out of one 
a few years back, never replaced it. And then he was telling me, he's like, you, you haven't replaced it in your bar. And I was like, no. He's like, you really need to uh, get another bottle. He said, they're still really solid. Went and picked one up. He was absolutely right. Matter of fact, we even cracked his and it was equally delicious. Uh, but Klein Leach 14, retail price about $60, $70 now. Solid, solid little Highland backup. All right. Campbelltown Whiskey of the Year. Mm, again, these two battling, uh, really battling, and I really kind of wanted to put this one up there. Could I make that change right now? Maybe, because they're really that close for me. The Long Row 14 uh, Sherry Cask. Now, this one actually, I think, was released around the country in 28, late 18, I think is when it was started coming out. Uh, but it, I didn't even hear about this thing until 2019, and it didn't show up in my specs until t this year. Uh, but this bottle at $115, very solid long row, good color, getting good influence out of that sherry cask. Uh, that's, yeah, it just has a little, of course, that spring bank deep, you know, profile that they're able to get is kind of what nudges it over this runner-up. The runner-up is the $85 Glen Scotia Victoriana. I've really enjoyed this whiskey for several years now, to be honest. Um, it's just that each and every year, there's always usually something that's just slightly better, and then next thing I know, I have two in front of it, and it just doesn't, didn't make the list before. Uh, but this year, again, time's in, you know, a little rough. And this one, not that it didn't deserve to be here. It's a very elegant little pour. So if you can find Victoriana around $85, very solid selection. Another one that, if you can't find either of those two, the uh, Kilcarens, the eight-year-old cast strengths in these white tubes, pretty solid. They're a little aggressive. They're a little aggressive, uh, but for $80, a nice honorable mention there. Uh, let's see, they did a sherry version as well, but that was, that came out 2019. Um, again, didn't hit my area until this year. That sherry version is really solid, but again, they have an ex-bourbon barrel and a sherry. Either one, all right? All right. Now we're at Isla, Whiskey of the Year. For Isla, um, again, a kind of a late entry. Uh, this bottle showed up in Texas for me two weeks ago. And up until then, it was going to be the Lafroig 16. But this one kind of just came in and stole the show, as Octomores tend to do. And I actually picked up the Octomore 11.1 and the 11.3. The 11.3 was where it was at. Retail pricing on it is $230, $240 for this one. But I will say this 11.3, it's close. It's, it's not the 6.3. The 6.3 was phenomenal. Uh, but since the 6.3, all those point threes, they've been okay. They've been good. I think this one's probably one of the better ones since that 6.3. Again, $240. Now here's that runner-up one more time. Uh, the Lefroig 16. It was a limited release. Very solid release from them. Uh, I know they did a 16 once before in the half bottles. Um, but this one, uh, for retail pricing on it, was $110. It's a very kind of lively little Lefroig. It's got a lot of citrus going on. It's not what the old 15, not even the old 15, that 200th anniversary 15 that they released a few years back, that one had a lot of tropical fruit kicking. This one's more on that kind of uh, vanilla icing, uh, lemon peel type essence, uh, but the smoke is very nice and it's just well integrated whiskey, so very happy with that one being a runner up. All right, moving on into the brandy category, Armagnac of the Year. Uh, this category was pretty full this year. There was a lot of good Armagnacs coming out. Uh, but the one that made the best impression on me as far as both a combination of price point and quality was the DeRose 20. Now, the DeRose 20 is an assembly of barrels. Uh, it's called Grand Assemblage, and it is um, really well blended by Mark DeRose. And what makes this so phenomenal for me at the price point of only about $75, $80 is how some of the barrels that were put into this blend have those deep roncio tones, those kind of earthy, mushroomy, kind of cheesy notes um, that you find in really old cognac, really old Armagnac. 
Well, this 20 has some of that. And it's really well balanced with the freshness or the fresher fruits of a younger Armagnac. But again, every bit of this is 20 years old, all right? So that's going to be my Armagnac of the year. Runner-up, honorable mention, you could kind of take your pick. A lot of these line cantatas are very solid. Uh, I tend to prefer the ones coming out of wet cellars that are about 30-ish years old. I think this one was a 34-year-old coming out of Lincoln Road. 35-year-old uh, coming out of Lincoln Road. Uh, but retail pricing on these are about... They run anywhere from, depending on their age and where they're from, about $175 to $250. So they're not the cheapest thing, uh, but loads of depth in these as well. So if you can't find this 20, which I think you should, this is pretty available. Uh, but if you want to splurge, long katadas are solid. All right, Cognac of the Year. Cognac of the Year is going to go to Maison Ferrand. So Ferrand did this SDA, the Selection of the Angels, and this one is basically a, it's a non-age statement cognac, but they are using some older, damp, you know, wet cellar cognacs in this one, so they're getting a lot of those deep, kind of heading towards those Rancio tones as well. This one's a more elegant uh, brandy. It's a cognac, but it's a more elegant brandy than, let's say, even this 20. As much as I love this 20, this one... It's just a little touch uh, more in my style, my wheelhouse, let's say. Retail pricing on this Ferran is $180. Lots of chocolate tones in it. All right. Runner-up, honorable mention in the cognac category. One that could have been in here again the last few years. It's always been solid. Uh, the Kelt VSOP Tour de Monde, $60 for this bottle. It was $45 just a year or so ago. But even at $60, very, very well done uh, cognac. Readily available, lots of places. So that's a good one to have in your collection. All right, now we're moving on to Canadian Whiskey of the Year. Canadian Whiskey of the Year, again, was a very thin category for me. Now, here in Texas, we don't get a lot of really good Canadians, a lot of the good releases. Uh, we don't get those. Uh, and until... This bottle showed up two days ago. Um, I would say that that uh, Crown 16 rye was nice, enjoyable, and great. Uh, but for the price point, solid. Um, and the hand-selected barrels coming out of Crown, I still see these on shelves. These, uh, 110 proof, no, 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 100 proof uh, little Canadian ryes. Very good. Uh, retail pricing on them is only $50. Uh, they're not everywhere, but I do find that version of those blended crowns one of my, um, kind of an easy go-to, let's just say it like that. But the Alberta Premium, the cast strength rye, 100% rye that came out, hit our shelves. I was lucky enough to go grab a bottle. $55, 132 proof. It's a beast, and that price point, you can't beat it. Now, is it aggressive? A little bit when you first open it. I have a pour of it right here. But, a little thrill on the kind of confectionery side of things. Boy, it made you salivate. Um, really solid. I'll do a, a proper review of it eventually, hopefully, on YouTube. Matter of fact, I'm going to start doing more and more YouTube videos here shortly. Uh, this may be one of them. Uh, but $55, stole the show. Easily my favorite Canadian rye of the year. All right. Now, the one category I don't have in here, Japanese whiskey or um, anything like that. I don't have a Japanese whiskey that was really... There was one that stood out. I liked the Akashi 5-year-old, the sherry cask. I, I enjoyed it. Um... But at a price point of $240, it's a little rough. It's a five-year-old, you know. And as good as that sherry cask was, uh, I haven't added it to my collection. I've been on the verge of adding it. So if I was to pick one, that probably would have been it. I just have struggled with that price point and at that young age. So I didn't include it in here. Man. But I am at least talking about it, I guess. So if you feel like spurging on that, go ahead. All right. Now we're moving into the agaves category. So we're talking tequila and mezcal. 
tequila category. There's another good category that was pretty loaded this year. I, found, I had a lot of good ones. Um, the G4s. Fantastic line. Old school. You know, they do a lot of the Tejona crushing and, and stuff like that, but copper pot stills. They do a little hybrid on their Tejona. It's not a circular lava rock wheel going around in a circular pit. It's kind of this spiky steamroller with that rolls down a line crushing them. But anyway, G4s, very, very solid tequilas. Pure, unadulterated, um, great greatness, all right? They do, the Blancos, pick those up. They're great. Reposado, Añejo. They even have a $110 extra Añejo. Solid. It's three years old. This one that I'm showcasing as my tequila of the year is the 55-month one. So that's how you can tell their specialties are usually on the neck tag right here. Uh, of course, this one did come in a wooden box as well. Price point on this one, though, was $280. That's rough. Um, I will say that it, there is one characteristic of this tequila that I haven't seen since the Lalique Patron. The Lalique Patron is like six, dollars $7,000, but that one has strawberry essence in it. This one also has that kind of essence. Not as big as the Lily, but at $250, $280 for that experience, that's why it's in my bar. Now, if you can't, again, splurge on a $280, 55-month bottling, they did have a $200, 5, uh, has the 5 right there, 5-year-old, and that one was very solid as well. And of course, again, just the regular $110 extra on Yeho, uh, you can't go wrong with it. Now, one that was battling in my mind, again, very similar how I was battling with the space sides. I was kind of doing that with this tequila because the Winter Blend Fortaleza 2020 is killer. It's $85, okay? It was hard to find. That's why I didn't put it up at the very front. This one was hard to find. Um, and it probably is really hard to find right now because it's been a month since it came out, for, at least for me. Um, but the Winter Berlin Fortaleza at $85 was a great, great uh, pickup. Now, one that is still around, and it's going to be around because it's just the Still Strength Blanco, uh, is the Fortaleza Still Strength. This one's only $60, and it's a great Blanco. So... I could easily see me throwing this up there just because of the price point and its availability. Um, but I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. And both lines, the G4 line, the Fortaleza line, are solid throughout. So you're not going to go wrong with any of them. All right. Now, the, I will say Fortalezas do be a little... They were a few years getting a little batchy. Uh, but, you know, some are a little funkier than others, but they were all really good. All right. Now, moving on to the Mezcal category. Uh, the Alipus anniversary, the 20th anniversary, uh, Santa Ana. That one was really solid at $120. I, it's going to be my mezcal of the year. I know that one's a little hard to find. So for the runner-up, I chose the Yule Ball Hoven, the young Yule Ball. This is only $35, okay? I see this in gift packs when I was, you know, Christmas shopping. I saw it in gift packs available with some glasses. Um, and, you know, at $35, you're going to overlook it. You're just going to think, eh, who knows. But very solid, well-rounded, good mouthfeel, um, good balance of flavors in that mezcal. So very happy with that one. And if you can't find this one, that's, again, solid, solid pickup. All right, rum of the year. Uh, rum, I had some good rums this year, you know. Uh, Four Squares always throwing out a bunch of uh, special releases. As a matter of fact, I picked this one up at Total Wine, the Concierge Total Wine pick of their Masters Series Edition number one. Very rich, very flavorful. Um, but it, to me, it doesn't beat this one. Um, the Pusslers. Uh, this is the Gunpowder Rum. Now, Pusslers has been around forever. It's a Navy-style rum. Uh, but this gunpowder proof is just killer at $70, all right? Very rich flavor. Um, it's a hint of sweetness, 
But I've had four squares that are sweeter than it. Matter of fact, that one is sweeter than this one. So this gunpowder version, really something to look for if you happen to see it out there. That's my rum of the year. Uh, the Dorley's 12 is going to be the runner up at only $27. This is a four square product, but $27, unadulterated rum, good, well balanced rum. This is kind of almost similar to how you ball hit me, you know, it's just rich, well rounded, and uh, readily available. So, again, $27. Uh, this Dorley's 12 is great. All right, moving on to vodkas. Vodka of the year. It's this one, you know, I kept having people all the time uh, telling me that the Zier Vodka, you know, that's the one to get. That's the one to get. I went and got it. The Purity Vodka, though. This Purity 34, priced at only $25, is going to be my Vodka of the year. Is Beluga, the one that I named all the time in my previous years, better than the 34? It's close. It's very close. But I think the 34 might nudge it out right now. So that's why this Purity 34 is my vodka of the year. And this one, honorable mention. Okay. So Zier, if you see it out there, retail pricing on it, it's about $27. It's solid. It's just a little more, uh, it's a little sharp. It's a little more aggressive. Uh, to whereas the Purity 34 is soft. It feels elegant. It's very neutral. Uh, this one is a little more vanilla but it's just a little sharper a little more rough around the edges let's say for this one so that's why the purity gets the nod all right gin of the year gin of the year again gin has a lot of you know there's a lot of good gins out there you don't have to pay a lot of money uh, but the sip smith coming out of london 29 dollars says it's handcrafted in small batches $29 for this one. I really, really liked it. Again, I'm all about balance, right? I like for something to be very rich, mouth coating. I like to, to see it maybe transition and give you other flavors as it moves along. This one does all that, but every botanical that's in here is in well balance, all right? So, um, or it's balanced, I guess is the way we should say that. <laughs> but uh, it's very balanced in how the juniper and the citrus and the the cardamom and everything is just working so well together and nothing feels, you know, nothing overpowers anything else. There's the floral hints in it. Um, but if you can't find the Sipsmith for $29, then the runner-up is going to be the Uroku Gin coming from Suntory. $32 for this one. This one is a little more bolder in flavor. It leans more on the citrus. Uh, there's that cracked pepper kicking in this one as well. Uh, but the Roku Gin was very, very solid, very flavorful gin at only $32. So that's a good runner-up. Now, I did go back uh, when I was trying to run through these, because, again, it takes me a while to come up with all this. I'm, like, tasting and figuring it out. So last year's winner was the Greywell Gin. This is still an honorable mention. I really love how well this one is very flavorful, how the limes come through, the almonds are in there. Everything really... Uh, comes through in the Greywell Gin. So this one's still going to be a good, you know, honorable mention. So if you can't find the Roku, you can't find the Sip Smith, um, that Greywell is something to have in your collection as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video uh, year end, and it's I'm pretty glad this year is coming to an end. Hopefully 2021 is much better for each and every one of you. I thank you as always for joining me here on YouTube. Of course, I still have my Patreon channel rolling at uh, patreon.com slash liquorhound so you can always join me over there uh, but thank you all everyone have a great day and cheers